So doing a little further follow-up on this particular uh, discussion related to monkeypox and to try to clear up some of the potential misinformation that you might hear moving forward, especially if it's coming from the government or from doctors right, related to the government. They may push this as a narrative among people. And we're going to do a deep dive, as they say, into a lot of the information about how and where this started and who is primarily being affected. And it says... Uh, the case, the first case in the U.S. this year follows unusual clusters discovered in Europe and in Canada. And it goes on to say here, it says a man who had traveled to Canada had been diagnosed with monkeypox virus, a rare and potentially fatal disease. The Massachusetts Department of, Health, of Public Health reported on Wednesday. It says this is the first uh, this is the first report of monkeypox this year in the United States. Officials in Texas and in Maryland recorded uh, one case last year each. It says but the new case follows a series of unusual clusters in other countries that have begun to alarm public health officials. And so, wh why are we seeing such a a spread of this particular disease? Now, of course, they make mention of here in the past few weeks. Britain has identified nine monkeypox cases. Only one patient had recently traveled to Nigeria, where the strain of monkeypox virus has been uh, commonly seen, while the remaining British patients who did not travel may have acquired the infection through community transmission. Three patients shared a household. And of course, there are pa patients in Spain and in uh, Portugal, Canada, etc., and places in like Montreal. Now, where these cases are spreading, and why they're spreading so uh, rampantly now is because of the gay pride festivals, and what we're and that's why they make mention of Nigeria. Now, in Nigeria, where the disease primarily spreads, it typically comes places in, like in, in West Africa, which is where Nigeria is. It says bush meat is commonly consumed in West Africa, but there is a ban on monkey meat. It says this is intended to protect the primates, but it is also a public health measure. Eating monkey meat can lead to the transmission of diseases between animals and humans. Nevertheless, uh, monkey remains a delicacy. All right. And so this is why they make mention of Nigeria. And of course, for these individuals, they come in contact with the meat because, of course, they eat this particular type of food where the virus is prevalent. And that's why it's prevalent in this area. It's a poor country. They might not be um, an agricultural society where they have a variety of foods. And so this is a particular uh, delicacy in their country. And they handle these types of animals. Um, the animals are infected. They can spread to other animals. And when they're handling them, when they're butchering them, when they're skinning them, and when they're uh, processing the meat, this is particularly how the disease can spread. And so Another way that it can spread is obviously if you have any lesions on your bodies, if there are any lesions in your tongue, and of course, if you're in prolonged closed spaces with individuals, it can be spread via droplets, just like many other diseases. Now, there are numerous gay festivals that are taking place now and will continue through the summer, and many individuals experience harsh lockdowns. Maybe some of these people didn't take the COVID vaccine, and so they weren't able to freely travel as much as they were before, but now that things are opening up, we're seeing a lot more of these individuals that are traveling for all these types of parades, and that's why you're particularly seeing this spread uh, overwhelmingly among the gay community, overwhelmingly among gay men and of course as a result the lgbtq advocates are advocates are coming out because of the stigma that could spread just as quickly as the virus and it's for a good reason as most stds come from gay men now there's another article here talking about monkeypox is spreading primarily among gay men now we're going to read a little clip here it says the world health organization has now confirmed nearly 100 cases of monkeypox in over a dozen countries with the largest number in the uk while most so far it says while most cases so far are among gay and bisexual men it says health officials emphasize that anyone can contract a virus through close personal contact and it's when you when you look at the details of how diseases spread 
the reason that it's overwhelmingly spreading in this way is because it's such a small community and these individuals live very promiscuous lifestyles. And so they jump from partner to partner to partner. And this is how disease is spread. In fact, most STDs are spread from and among gay men. And unfortunately, because some of these individuals are bisexual, um, they end up sleeping with women and women are a large reservoir for STDs. And that's how many straight men end up contracting dise uh, diseases from prim primarily from women who are probably more than likely sleeping with men who are bisexual. And the CDC confirms this. It says the UK reported the first case in the current outbreak on May 7th in a man who had recently traveled to Nigeria where monkeypox is endemic. This was soon followed by two additional cases who share a household in four cases among gay and bisexual men, all of whom appear to have contracted the virus locally. How did they do that? Close and being close proximity and sleeping, kissing, being in close proximity to one another, coming in contact with uh, body lesions, and this is how these individuals were spreading the disease. Now, in terms of sexually transmitted diseases, according to the CDC, it says here, sexually transmitted diseases have been rising among gay and bisexual men with increase in syphilis being uh, being seen across the country. In 2014, gay and bisexual and other men who have sex with men accounted for 83% of primary and secondary cases of syphilis where sex of sex partner was known in the United States. Gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men often get other STDs, including chlamydia and gonorrhea infections. HPV, the HPV virus, which is the most common STD, is also a concern among bisexual and gay and other men who have sex with men. Some types of HPV can cause genital and anal warts, and obviously this is how a lot of this gets spread because they're having... Um, anal sex and oral sex and obviously the anal cavity is not a lubricated cavity and vast majority of these men obviously do not use protection and this is how the disease is spread and it goes on to state here it says gay bisexual and other men who have sex with men are 17 times more likely to get anal cancer than heterosexual men men who are hiv positive are even more likely than those who do not have hiv to get anal cancer, right? Again, from the CDC, it says, says, however, HIV continues to disproportionately affect gay and bisexual men who are younger and African-American or Latino. Nearly 330,000 gay and bisexual men with stage three HIV have died since the 1980s. And it goes on to state more information that you can read here. Now, according to the BBC, Sexually transmitted infections are soaring among gay men as a warning. It goes on to state, it says figures from 2014 show a 46% increase in syphilis infections, a 32% increase in gonorrhea, and a 26% increase in chlamydia. The report said that there were high levels of condomless sex in general and rapid transmission of HIV uh, infections in HIV positive men. Across all groups in England, the number of sexually transmitted infections fell by 0.3 from the previous year, right? To 439,000 new cases. And overwhelmingly, all of these cases are among infected gay or bisexual men. Chlamydia was the most common sexually transmitted infection, accounting for nearly half of all diseases. And as, and as it states that most of these infections are taking place, as it says right here, that, that men who slept with men accounted for 83% of the cases of syphilis and, and gonorrhea. Now, it goes on to state here. Um, now, in this article from the National Library of Medicine, uh, the National Center for Biotechnology and Information, and in an article titled, Sexually Transmitted Diseases Among Men Who Have Sex With Men, a Retrospective Analysis from the uh, Suraksha Clinic in a Tertiary Care Hospital. And this is basically showing the veracity, how these individuals have become inflamed with one another. As the observation states, 
75% of men who sleep with men were promiscuous. One third of them indulging in only homosexual activities. And that means that if only one in three are engaging in strict homosexual activities, that means two out of three are also sleeping with women, passing these diseases on to women. And many of these women are either knowingly or unknowingly sleeping with these men, not realizing that these men are passing diseases among each other. And as a result, this is typically why you see a lot of infections among women, because women, unfortunately, are a reservoir for, for diseases in the vagina. And so this is why when they sleep with men and when they're living promiscuous lifestyles, they may be unknowingly be sleeping with men who are also sleeping with other men and they're not using uh, any sort of protection and they're passing di diseases back and forth to each other. As it goes on to say that syphilis was the most common STD followed by chlamydia, um, acuminata, herpes disease, and gonorrhea. On comparing the data on the STD profiles of heterosexual men's predisposition toward bacterial STDs among men who sleep with men was observed. The conclusion is says identifications of men who sleep with men is important as most of them are bisexual and promiscuous, meaning that these men are going out and they're sleeping with all these different individuals and they're passing diseases from men with men to men with women. And then you come across a woman at a bar, you think you're having a good night, and you are unknowingly contracting a disease that primarily is being spread among men who lie with men. And this is why the Apostle Paul, who penned the scripture, um, was accurate in his assessment when he went on to state that, likewise, the men have abandoned natural relations with women and burned with a lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their ever for their error furthermore since they did not fit since they did not see fit to acknowledge god he gave them up to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done and that's exactly what this man states in his letter in an article entitled i organized nigeria's first ever pride event then i had to flee as I looked out the plane window down to the down at the country I was leaving behind, I couldn't, I couldn't help but cry. I had no idea when I'd be coming back to Nigeria, but I needed to leave for my own safety. More than three years later, still I haven't been able to go home. If I do, I'm terrified I'll be killed for being gone. Looking back, my childhood was relatively normal and easy. I have fond memories of growing up with my immediate family and cousins celebrating Christmas, still my favorite time of the year, with new clothes and visiting friends and neighbors. There were low moments too, like losing loved ones and pets, moving to a new school and city, but on the whole, I had a happy young life. But when I realized I was gay, it was the elephant in the room that should never be addressed. When I was about eight or nine, I lived and dreamed in colors. I was different. I did not like traditional sports like other boys who played football all day long. Growing up in Christian culture meant toxic heteronormativity and excessive order. In my teenage years, I had no interest in women and I could not relate to what my teacher said in biology class. There was no one to confide in, and I couldn't be open in such a religious society either. In hindsight, what felt like a happy childhood for me was, in fact, a facade, masking a private despair, a stolen life, a happiness that never existed. He goes on to state that he eventually moved to the UK, where he was able to live out the life that he wanted. Right? It says, seven years ago, I started campaigning for refugee rights in Nigeria. And this is basically where a lot of this gets started, where you have individuals like this who want to live this depraved lifestyle. And as a result, they spread disease everywhere that they go. As the Apostle Paul had stated, furthermore, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, 
He gave them up to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. And as a result, they end up with a diseased body. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching. Leave your comment below, and I'll check you out next time.